Hello everyone, I'm Han Wen. I'm going to present our work Computational Robust Fuzzy Extractors for CRS Dependent Sources. This is joint work with Chang Tang. A basic goal of cryptography is to enable two parties, Alice and Bob, to securely communicate over an untrust channel that might be controlled by active attackers. As everybody knows, if Alice and Bob already share a perfect secret, we have a bunch of tools to enable them to establish a secure channel. But in many scenarios, they may just share a weak secret, or just a pair of clothes, but non-identical weak secrets. Here, weak secret is a private, but non-uniform string. It could be password or biometric information like fingerprints. They might also be generated by some physical means or caused by leakage. In such a case, Alice and Bob have to run a primitive called an authenticated key exchange protocol to agree upon a perfect secret. In the history, this fundamental primitive has been studied under different names. Among them, the robust extractor actually defines the one message AKE, and if it also works for a pair of close weak secrets, we can call it a robust fuzzy extractor. In general, it can be described by a generation algorithm and a reproduction algorithm. Alice can use this generation algorithm to produce a perfect secret along with the helper string. And after receiving this helper string, Bob can reproduce the same perfect secret as Alice does. It has two security requirements. The immediate one is the privacy. It says, this produced secret should be indistinguishable with the uniform randomness, even conditional on the public help string P. This is also why we consider this primitive as the variant of a randomness extractor, because this generation algorithm actually extracts a nearly uniform string from a non-uniform string. The second requirement is the robustness. An active attacker might change the help string to another. The robustness ensures that any manipulation will be detected and rejected by the reproduction algorithm. There is a stronger notion called post-application robustness. It considers a stronger adversary that can obtain the extracted remnants from other upper-level applications. This property ensures this adversary still cannot manipulate the help string without being detected. To distinguish it, we call the original robustness pre-application robustness. The one method feature is of course appealing and useful, but uh, it's also very expensive. Here, consider the setting of information theoretical security and player model, where the attacker can have unlimited computation power and there is no trusted setup. This is the most desirable setting. However, for robust extractors, Dolly's and Wix have given a tight bound on the admissible security source. That is, if there is a robust extractor for all, for all secret services with n bit length and k mean entropy, the entropy rate k over n must be larger than the half. This requirement directly excludes many natural sources, like fingerprints. In contrast, many interactive AKE protocols could work for sources with superlog mean entropy. Or if we don't require robustness but ask for one message feature, the conventional randomness tracker can also work for, so work for sources with only superlog mean entropy. On the other hand, there are trivial solutions in relaxed models. For example, in the random oracle model, Alice and Bob can directly query the random oracle to get with the weak secret to get a perfect secret. And in this case, the help string is just empty. So it's surely a robust extractor. But the problem is RAM Oracle clearly does not exist. So it's just a heuristic approach that we wish to avoid. We can also put the seed of a randomness extractor into the common reference string and Alice and Bob can extract the same perfect secret using this seed. This also gives a robust extractor in the CRS model. But the problem is the secret sources have to be independent of the CRS, since the state of RAM extractor should be independent of the sources being extracted. We found the CRS independence requirement is hard to, is hard to justify. 
CRS is fixed and public, and everybody can see it. It's hard to ensure a source a source produced after seeing the CRS is not affected by this CRS. For example, if the source is from a maliciously manufactured device that contains the CRS, it should be CRS dependent. And more generally, for any sources, once a CRS dependent information is leaked to adversary, the remaining secret is CRS dependent. So we are curious about that. Can we have a robust extractor for CRS dependent sources without raising extra entropy requirement? To have a clear picture, let's recall the landscape. An information theoretical secure robust extractor in the plane model only works for sources with entropy greater than half. On the other hand, we know how to uh, get around this, uh, this, this lower bound by using a random oracle or introducing a CRS but require the sources to be independent of these CRS. However, for the CRS dependent model, that we think is stronger than the print model, but more, but more standard than the CRS dependent model and the random oracle model. There is neither positive result nor negative result yet. And relaxing to computational security was not shown helpful as well. In this work, we first formally prove that the lower bound for player model and information theoretical construction still holds for CRS dependent and uh, information theoretical constructions. So to bypass this lower bound, we have to look at computational settings. Fortunately, we really solve this problem. We propose a computationally secure robust fuzzy, robust extractor for uh, general CRS dependent sources with minimal entropy requirement. We also extended our solution to the fuzzy case and gave the first uh, uh, computational robust fuzzy extractors for CRS dependent sources without requiring the half entropy rate. Now, let's present our first result in more detail. To begin with, a CRS model robust extractor can be described by a CRS setup algorithm, a generation algorithm, and a reproduction algorithm. It's equal to view this construction as a family of a plain model instances and a distribution over this family. Here, each instance is the generation algorithm and the reproduction algorithm with the fixed CRS. A natural security is like this. For any adversary and, and, and any CRS dependent NK source W, a randomly chosen source instance is good. That is, this adversary only has very small advantage to win the security game. We obtain our result by proving that the quantiverse can be swapped in this setting. That is, there must be an instance that is good for any adversary and any source. So this, is, this instance is already a secure plane model construction. In other words, an information theoretical CRS dependent robust extractor implies, uh, implies an information theoretical secure plane model construction. So the same, bound, the same lower bound applies here. We proceed this proof by swapping the quantifiers one by one. The security definition for a single property already guarantees that for each adversary and uh, each source, uh, a random chosen instance is good. We first apply standard techniques like a Markov inequality, inequality to show that for each adversary A and each source W, there is a set SAW of instances, of instances that are good for them. And the weight of SAW should be larger than a parameter delta. We then uh, swap the quantifier between the source, between the set and the source. We prove that for each adversary, there should be a set SA uh, of instances that are good for this adversary A and any source uh, W. Particularly, the weight of the set SA should still be larger than dirt. This step heavily relies on the fact that the sources can be uh, dependent on the CRS. Most specifically, we define the set SA 
and the intersection of all SAW for all sources W. And then SA, the weight of SA should be larger than, than the parameter delta. Otherwise, its complementary set should be weight larger than one minus delta. Then, by definition, the by definition of the complementary set, each instance in the complementary set should be should be bad for at least one source should should, should be bad for at least one source. Then we can define a new source. Its conditional distribution on each CRS in the complementary is 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 the is, is the bad source we just mentioned. Then by definition. For the for the adversary A and the new source W star we just constructed, there is no set A C W star with sufficient weight larger than the parameter delta. The last in the last in the next step, we swap the quantifier between the set and the adversary. We prove that there should be a set S of instances that is good that are good. For any source W and any any adversary A, this step is similar to uh, the last step, the last step we described, and relies on the fact that the adversary is information is theoretical, and has uh, it means it has a, a unlimited computational power. <coughs> and uh, at this stage, we already have a good set. A good set with respect to a single property. We finally prove that the good sets for different properties have an intersection, and then an instance in this intersection is a secure plane model construction that we need. Our second result is a computational robust extractor for CRS dependent sources with minimal entropy requirement. To make it modular and easy to understand, we abstract a new Mac primitive which we call copy Mac and show how to use it to reach our result. Our intuition is very natural. As I mentioned before, a random list tractor can be used as a K one message K exchange protocol against the passive adversaries. So if we can somehow authenticate the public seed such that even active adversaries cannot change it, then we already obtain a robust extractor. Let's see our framework in more detail. Since both Alice and Bob already share a weak secret, it's natural to use this weak secret as the MACK. Then the helper string will contain a public seed for random extraction and a MAC tag that authenticates this public seed. In reproduction algorithm, it first checks whether the MAC tag is, is valid. If invalid, the re reproduction algorithm just aborts. Otherwise, it uses the public seed to reproduce the same perfect secret. One tricky part here is that we actually use the weak secret for both random extraction and MAC tag generation. So, to ensure the final construction is secure, the component must provide some level of a composition security. More specifically, it's easy to say long max are insufficient. For random extraction, since the helper string already contains a MAC tag, this MAC tag must contain sufficient amount of information about the weak secret, so we cannot ensure the extracted random is still still random. And for MAC, and since we want to post application robustness, the public seed and the extracted remnants will be leaked to the adversary. So we cannot ensure in this case the map is still unforgeable. So we need additional properties to ensure the composition security needed. Uh, more specifically, to ensure the random extraction is not affected by the map, we require key privacy, that is, the MAC tag does not leak parse information about the secret. And in the other way, to prevent the MAC be, being affected by the random extraction, we require the MAC to be secure against auxiliary input leakages. Another implicit requirement is that the key should be structureless, 
such that we can directly use a weak secret as the map key. Putting all requirements together, we define couple map. A subtlety in our definition is to identify the largest admissible auxiliary input class. On the one hand, it should be computational how to invert. On the other hand, it should not contain authentication tags. Otherwise, otherwise, adversaries can leverage the tag to break the unforgivability. We refer you guys to our full paper for the detailed treatment. Now I will show you how to construct CapMac in the CS model from real study assumptions. Our starting point is using an auxiliary input signature as a Mac. This, this is the digital signature allows the adversary to say some uh, verification key dependent uh, leakage. And the most standard way to use it on Mac is to enable the verifier also have the signing key. But a problem here is that in the setting of Mac, we cannot directly assume a trusted verif verification key. So we may put it uh, as a part of the Mac key. But for Kappa Mac, we need the Mac key to be structureless, so we cannot put it here. The only choice is to let it be a part of a Mac tag. But now the adversary may have an extra advantage by modifying this verification key. To address this problem, we first directly leverage our CRS model. Most specifically, we split the verification key into a user-specific part, YK, and a common part, and put the common part into the CRS, such that a versary cannot modify it. The remaining challenge is to ensure verification on YK is still useless. That is, even the attacker changes YK, the signature, and the message together, the verifier Bob can still find it's, uh, it's an invalid MAC tag. Another challenge is to ensure YK cannot leak partial information of SK. This is necessary for the key privacy property. To address these challenges, we choose to strengthen an auxiliary input secure signature scheme proposed by Cars and Vikontalazan. In their scheme, it contains two building blocks a leakage resident hard relation and a true simulation extractable needs. In our couple map, we propose a so-called strengthened leakage resident hard relation, which simultaneously guarantees that manipulation on YK is useless, is useless and YK has partial information of SK. Uh, let's recall the cards were controller than signature. Its building block Leakage resident hard relation is an NP relation with a generator, such that given the statement Y and the leakage on Y and the witness K, finding a valid witness K prime for Y is hard. When using it to construct a signature, the witness K will be the sign K, Y and a NISC CRS will be the verification K, and the signature is a proof of knowledge of K. From the property of a true simulation travel NISC, we can extract a valid K prime from a valid signature, which contradicts the leakage resident hard relation definition. So this signature scheme is unforgeable with respect to uh, auxiliary input leakages. We strengthen the leakage resident hard relation in multiple places. First, we split the generator to PG and SG. PG is independent of witness, so it can be put into CRS to leverage the flexibility provided by our CRS model. The witness is just sampled from a secret key source, and the YK is generated according to PP and K using SG, so we can ensure the MAC with for structureless MAC case, PP and YK together as a statement. Regarding the leakage, here is just a function of k and pp. yk is not the input of the leakage function because it's now a part of an authentication tag and only needed to consider priority leakage. This is something we can leverage to improve our construction. 
Then the worst way is to find which is k prime for y k prime specified specified by himself instead of finding k prime for the honestly generated y k. This is because y k is in the authentication authentication tag that can be modified by the adversary. But uh, the YK primes sh with PP should still be a va valid statement with respect to the K, since the verifier has the original K to check whether YK prime is valid. Finally, YK and PP should hide the information about the K, since we need K privacy. With this strengthened leakage reason hard relation, we can build a cup map by following the framework of cards and we call another signature. The map consists of a YK generated from the WKK and a NISC proof demonstrating the knowledge of K with respect to PP and YK. The verification checks both whether YK PP K belongs to the relation R and whether the NISC proof is valid. Here, the message can also be bound to the proof using standard techniques. Then we construct this SLRH relation. Recall that an SLRH relation ensures PP, YK, hide K, which is necessary for privacy. And it prevents adversaries from finding YK prime, K prime, and such that both PP, YK prime, K prime, and PP, YK prime, K belong to the relation. We observe that privacy requirement really prevents from finding the same K from PP and YK. So, if we can further provide collision resistance, which means the adversary cannot find a different K prime to the K, we can have a, a SLRH relation. Following this observation, we first construct a private relation from deterministic public key encryption. Here, we just encrypt the, the weak KK under a fresh public key and let the ciphertest and public key be the statement. It's an NP relation since it can be efficiently checked by just re-encrypting without using any remedies. It's also private, given the other input security of the underlying DPKE scheme, but it's not collision resistant, because if the adversary changes the PK to a bad PK, there might be multiple messages with respect to the same ciphertest under this bad PK. The next step is to leverage the NISC to enforce the goodness of the chosen public key. That is, the YK should contain a valid proof that demonstrates the chosen public key determines an injection. In this case, a ciphertest C and the public key can uniquely determine the underlying message K, so the whole relation is collision resistant. From our priori uh, result, if a relation is both private and collision resistant, it's already a SLRH relation. Surface for our need. As a conclusion, we first construct a robust extractor using CapMac and uh, conventional RAM extractors. To make the robust extractor work for any CS dependent sources with minimal entropy, this CapMac should also be secure against any unpredictable auxiliary inputs. Then we construct uh, the CapMac from a true simulation travel NISC and an SLRH relation. And this SLRH relation can be constructed from NISC and a DPKE scheme. And the DPKE scheme should also be secure against any unpredictable other inputs as well. Let's check the assumptions needed for the, leaf, uh, for the primitives and the leaf nodes. For Remnant Extractor, we have information theoretical secure constructions. For NISC, including true simulation trap NISC, it can be constructed from RSA assumption, 
or pairing were pairings. Or more recently, from the LWE subsing or the DDHL subsing. For DPKE against uh, any unpredictable algorithm inputs, we have constructions from uh, exponentially hard DDH assumption. So our robust extractor can be built upon well studied assumptions. Our third result is an extension to the father case. We show that with a stronger cup map, we have robust fuzzy extractors for CRS dependent sources without the half entropy rate requirement. And more interestingly, our cup map construction already satisfies the stronger definition, so we can have the robust fuzzy extractors from the same assumption as the robust extractors we give above. Let's start from a standard construction of fuzzy extractors. It uses a secure sketch, which is an error correcting code, where the code does not leak much information about the message. The hyperstring now contains a sketch information with which the, per re the reproduction algorithm can convert the weak secret into another closed secret that was used to generate this, this sketch. And then this weak secret can be used to produce the same perfect secret as the generation algorithm does. As before, we can we consider using cutback to authenticate the hyperstring such that the adversary cannot manipulate the hyperstring without being detected. However, the standard cutback is insufficient here. This is because we cannot ensure the weak secret key recovered from the secure sketch is identical to that one used in the generation algorithm. And the, and the adversary can manipulate this uh, secure sketch as well. By the definition of the secure sketch, we can only ensure the, this weak secret is close to the input secret of the reproduction algorithm. So we need a stronger couple map which prevents adversaries from forging an authentication attack being accepted by a closed secret. We call this property of we call this property fuzzy unforgeability. Fortunately, although standard cup map is insufficient, our cup map construction actually satisfies this stronger definition. As I just said, we construct robust fuzzy character with using cup map with fuzzy unforgeability. We then construct this cutback from a fuzzy SLRH relation, which requires the adversary cannot find K prime and YK prime, such that YK prime and PP is a valid statement with respect to some K star, which is which is near to the original witness K. For this fuzzy SLRH relation, we don't need other fuzzy pre fuzzy building blocks. Instead. We prove a private relation plus a creation resistant relation implies this fuzzy primitive. The key idea is to show that the privacy already ensures that one cannot find a closed secret from YK, while we already prove that the exact secret cannot be recovered from YK. We argue this in two cases. First, it's easy to show the infeasibility of finding a very close secret. Otherwise, one can guess the exact one with high probability. We also prove it's also it's still infeasible to find a not very close one. This is because one can always recover the exact one with the help of a secure sketch if it can find a not very close one. Note that our privacy de definition is secure against uh, auxiliary inputs. We can treat the secure sketch as, a, as an auxiliary input and give it to the adversary. So we have this result. Now let's have a summary. On the negative side, we prove the lower bound on the entropy rate requirement that was established for information theoretical and play model robust extractors, studio holes, even when we introduce the CRS and consider CRS dependent sources. On the, on the positive side, we beat the bound in the computational setting by giving a concrete, computationally secure, robust extractors for CRS dependent sources with minimal entropy requirement. 
we also extend our solution to the father case. Along this way, we present a new Mac primitive called Copper Mac that satisfies key privacy and auxiliary input security, which might be of independent interest. That's my presentation. Thanks for listening.